from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowitzki. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Beat the Champ with Hall of Fame bowlers Sue Nowitzki and Janelle Saban. My name is Paul Peck. We've had a great three-week run here at Malwitz's Island Lanes on Grand Island. Some great bowling, Sue, but we have made a decision that I feel like we may come to regret, which is turning over this show to Mike Malwitz and the gang here at Island Lanes. Oh, welcome the to Animal House. The look on your face says welcome all you House. need to know. Well, we're going to see the fun side of bowling, that's for sure. So. Yes. This, we, four captains, four regular bowlers here at Island Lanes had a draft, picked a bunch of other regulars. So we've got 20 people bowling on four teams. It may get a little out of control. It's definitely going to be a crazy day, but I don't know about you, Paul. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Hey, if you're if you're excited about the unexpected, then this is the show for you. It's the Island Lanes in-house bowling competition team challenge and it starts right now first match is team moran andy moran in the black on the right and this is jim fox and team fox will get us going here for what should be an entertaining afternoon of the island lanes championship so explain sue the format each team has five bowlers Right, so pay attention to the numbers on their left arm. That's telling you where they are in the lineup. So number one, which is uh, for Team Fox here, is Chris Wilkinson. He's going to bowl frames one and six. So now we're going to go over to Team Moran, and they're going to they're bowl frames one and two, which is going to be bowler one and two. Right, so this is Stephanie Price, bowler number one for Team Moran. Right. Sort of go by Stephanie McGinn. What? Stephanie McGinn, well, maiden name. That's why we've got you here, Brandon <laughs> Degatti, for all the inside information. If you have been watching the show over the last month, you know Brandon Degatti was the guy that started us off in the first match and then made appearances in shows two and three with your outstanding <laughs> physical speed and skills in running to fix the lanes. Thank you. Thank you. That's about all I'm good at now. So Brandon's going to be our expert color commentator here because nobody knows this gang from Island Lanes better than you. Unfortunately, the, yeah, that is true. Yeah, these I, are your <laughs> friends. I'm not sure you wanted all of Western New York to know that or not. <laughs> no, some of them are good people. <laughs> Some, again, of them. Some of them. All right. Like, so, so we saw Stephanie Bowl. So now we are going to move things to Joe Cliss from Team Moran, bowler number two in frame number two. What do we need to know about Joe, Brandon? That's a good break. I bowled with Joe in high school. Did you? And he throws it just about as good as he did then. Only the, the difference between the practice pair and this pair at this point is just monstrous. So. I, I wandered my way over there and threw one on the practice pair, and I went, oh, well, they're hooking, but I guarantee not as much as the other pair. Right, which is why we saw, you know, they did get a little practice, but still, they're going to be moving in and moving in and moving in. Sometimes it takes four or five practice balls to move in and you have to. I mean, one-game matches when you're bowling all ten frames are hard enough. When you're only throwing two, two. shots, they're really hard. So here's the second throw for Joe, and he will finish off the spare for Team Moran. So that's how we're keeping track of this as you catch your looks at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. Team Moran versus Team Fox. Now we move over to Team Fox and their second bowler, Lisa Bugenhagen. I'm going to stop you there, too. It's Lisa Redline, not Bugenhagen. Another <laughs> maiden name. I'm just going by my roster here, Don't Brandon. Worry, but she is the good Bugenhagen. Her husband, he hangs around with us too, but <laughs> you know, she's actually a, a family member. It's oh, very good. Right, right, Artie's right. Artie's cousin's daughter. Right? Yeah. Right. Well, Uncle Roy, as Mike would refer, as Mike and I would refer to him. How much, how much fun do you guys generally have here at Island Lanes? This looks like this may be amongst the more entertaining places to bowl in Western New York. It's not even just, it's wherever we go, we bring the fun with us for some, I don't. It, it's just a Grand Island thing? It's more of a Mike Mullins thing. <laughs> okay, I mean, there you go. That makes when, perfect sense. When him and I bowl together in the Travel League, they 
They didn't like our rah-rah spirit. So his marriage settled Mike down? No. No. He found a perfect mate and <laughs> likes to party as much as he does. All right, so next up for Team Fox, Frank Misoraka. Nice strike for Frank. And a pump of the fist. Yes, yeah, Frank's always solid. That was the pick that Mike wanted Jeremy to make that he wouldn't take him. He took Ron Sutton instead. Oh, well, now explain no, to everybody. Kidding, <laughs> ex explain to everybody how these teams came about. You guys did a draft. Yeah, thank God I was working my other job when that went on because I wouldn't have wanted to been sucked. They were having way too much fun. <laughs> And next up for Team Moran, a guy that is familiar to beat the champ bowlers. We've seen Josh Nowak on the show a number of times. Yeah. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. You don't even want to. We could sell tickets for it. <laughs> yes, we <Probably>. could. <laughs> yes, we might be able to do that. There's the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. Keeping track of this battle between Team Moran Oops. and Team Fox. Here's Chris Wilkinson for Team Fox. Anything but that pitch Louie's throwing probably would have overreacted. He always throws urethane. It's such old technology. I was going to say, th 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 nobody's thrown urethane in about 20 years, but right? But he got that uh, ball in and it stayed there, so. That's why people switch to that. The, the pro players still do. It's making a tiny bit of a comeback, yeah. I mean, it won't take over, but it is uh, getting more play than it did for a lot of years. It's, well, sometimes when they, to speak, the U.S. Open kind of turn into a carnival game where they're locked in the left gutter cap and urethane helps. These guys with their super high rev rate and crazy pin action, that's what the PBA wants you to see. Those, and he is speaking very, very true words right there. Here's, here's Lisa's second ball yeah. off for Team Fox. Nice great right there. Right. The good one. <laughs> that's one of the chants that used to get Mike and I in trouble in Travel League. <laughs> she bowled on the team with us. It was me, him, her, her father, and the old head mechanic who just recently passed away, Whitey. And yeah, we were bad. We had a lot of fun. Like, we it was just loud, but we were loud in a good way, cheering for our own team. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's why Joe, I was president of the A-League. Joe Cliss next up for <laughs> Team Moran. Oh, look at that. Starting to put some strikes up on the board here. Yeah, they're trying to put the screws to him now. Josh Nowak is the next guy to take the ball off the return for Team Moran. And there's a look at the scoreboard as we're still battling in this one, aren't we? The winner of this will advance to our championship round against the winner of our next match, which is Team Zimmerman versus Team Johnson. Two very familiar names to beat the champ fans. Your feet got a little fast there. That's not something I want to throw at right now. You got that right. You might as well leave a split if you're going to leave this. This is a tough one. Not chopping that is, uh, is, is tough. It's like a double. It's the hardest non-split, non-washout. You know, when the lanes hook a lot, it's really tough to make. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Josh can do with it. That's a pretty good job. Pretty good job to pick up the spare. So okay, that. so we have a 20-pin match that uh, that can be cut down to 10 because there's a strike up there. Gotcha. So Frank Misaraka for Team Fox next up. That's a guy you want in this position. He's pretty clutch. Yeah, he struck on his first shot. Plus he's sporting the cool glittery numbers <laughs> on his shoulders. <laughs> Big nice. strike for Frank. Okay, so now the momentum's kind of shifted, and Team Fox can actually tie it up if they can strike again. So Mike Krikum is the next guy up to try to do that. Chance to tie this one up. So, I can only imagine if this match comes right down to the end, the, the, the roof may blow off this place. <laughs> you may have a few more repairs to do, Brandon. 
we haven't had too many yet today. There it is. Oh, oh, he thought he just went for a yeah. second. Oh, I mean, <laughs> uh, it's burn up and say, all right, kind of still anticipated that missing the headline. Did you see the look of surprise on his face when he turned around? There's about like 50 other people in here that have the same look on their face. <laughs> Tim Marble for Team Moran. <laughs> Not quite yet for all the marbles, but Tim oh. Marble almost gets all the pins. Those are pretty far up on leave when they get burnt up like this. You just you leave it in a little bit or you get a tad slow and they, it's better than a 4-9. Single pin spare here for Tim. And he gets it. So are, is is our league nights just like this all the time here, at Brandon? Brandon here at Iowa I don't know Lanes. if we can talk about what. Well, now that I'm not bowling too many leagues anymore, I used to bowl Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. Things have probably settled down a little bit. You I mean, because you're got, not here. Yeah. <laughs> if you ask the guys who bowled Monday nights, they'll they can probably tell you some real horror stories of things that I did while we were bowling, <laughs> especially on shots that struck that I didn't think should have. Big strike in the 10th frame for Andy Moran. Great shot. That's the buzz saw. The, ba the buzz saw. The, the I love buzz it. Saw. I remember his interview when he, I think it was here he lost. He's been on the show said, a couple of times. What happened, Andy? Oh, I ran into a buzz saw. <laughs> he hasn't lived that down yet. That's all it takes, huh? That's, all it takes to pin a new nickname yeah. on you. We don't let him live much down around here. <laughs> All right, Andy Moran still going, looking for another one. He's all he can eat. They're all big now. Got it. Great shot. Cool, solid. Look at the look on his face, Brandon. Just, yeah, that's what I expected to do. The most buzzsaw. Serious. He's one of the most serious bowlers, even in our house league, Is having he? fun. He, he knows who we're bowling three weeks from now. He knows exactly how many pins we need to tie for anything. He's a good guy to have on your team because you know what you got to do. He lets you know. He doesn't let you take a frame off. Final throw here in the 10th frame for Team Moran. Did it again. What a way to finish it for Andy Moran. So Team Moran puts a 214 on the board. What does Team Fox need? Do they have a chance here? Well, they, well, they need this first one for sure. This must this is a must strike situation. Yeah. Mathematically he has to strike. Alright, so Jim Fox feeling the pressure. Gotta get a strike. First shot, doing that's impressive. Okay, so nine spare nine will be a tie. tie. You don't want to tie here. I don't know how they break ties. I don't know game, either. But why, I don't, why they do might I feel make the, like the, they might make the rule. Well, I feel like they may move to the bar to break the tie, which is what scares me. See, I did ask him prior. I said, "Why are you bowling anchor?" Because well, I'm captain. I go, "Well, don't you think you should maybe get someone a little better?" Just, uh, just having fun with them. So see. nine spare ties. What about a strike here? Strike wins. Strike wins. Got it. Oh, oh no. no! It's not a ten pin. All right. You know, so we may point. need a tiebreaker here. I say those routine single pin spares, but everyone's seen me whiff about four of them on TV now, so <laughs> they're in my head at this point in time. All right. So Jim Fox has to get this single pin spare to tie, and then we'll figure out how what our tiebreaker is. Does he get it? He does. <laughs> All right, now I guess we're gonna have to consult with Mike on how well, we break. Well, let's this get tie. the commissioner. Commissioner. Hey, Mike. We need the commissioner. Do we have a tiebreaker? Well, normally under beat the champ rules, we would look at the rules, but this is <laughs> this is the in-house show, so we can do what we want. 
So uh, we should do a ninth and tenth frame roll off with four and five bullers. What do you think? All right. Works for us. All right, let's go. All right, so we've got the tiebreaker figured out now between Moran and Fox to determine who advances. Tell us how we're going to do it. Okay, we're going to do high, high ball, which means the first bowler is going to take a shot. If he gets a strike, second, the bowler for the next, the other has team to get a strike. has to get a strike. If he gets anything less than a strike, it's game over. Right, so if think, he strikes, we go to the next bowler. Think about it as kind of like an NHL shootout Correct. a little bit, except we're only doing one here, but you got to keep matching, or if one team does more than the other, then it's over. Correct. All right, so Jim Fox goes first for to Fox. set the tone here. It's a bad pick. He could have struck to one the game he did. Brandon Degatti says it's a bad pick. Come on, Fox. See you Wednesday, baby! Ooh. All right, All right. All right. so it's wrong. an eight. I've been wrong on every... So Andy Moran so for Team Moran needs to get a nine, and they win. Nine or strike. Nine or strike, and Team Moran wins. Every call I've made today has been wrong. I was hoping I was wrong there, too. <laughs> All right, so that's how we're going to do it. Team Moran, nine or strike, and they win in advance. Yeah, Andy doesn't eat very often, so it's almost for sure now. Oh, that's pretty bad. Oh! Wow, that was really bad. Okay. Round two. Yeah, it was wrong again. Round two. Okay. So, so now the next set of bowlers have the same challenge. Correct. High ball wins. So they're going to go to uh, Mike Prakum for Team Fox and okay. Tim Marble for Team Moran. Now this is a better matchup here. Unbelievable. Who'd have thought? If Prakum strikes, it's going to get really loud in here. So now if Prakum strikes, then that means Tim Marble has to strike to go to a third roll off. Strike nine is good right now. All right, so okay. here's Mike, Mike Crichton Crichton for, Team Fox. for Team Fox. Second overtime, so to speak. <laughs> DQ him for dropping his number. Dropping my number. You're oh, out. You, me. <laughs> <laughs> you might need that again, Crichton. All right, so Tim Marble must get a strike for us to go to a third round of overtime. It's another guy that could have sealed it with a strike earlier. Yeah! And it's a win for Team Fox. Yeah! Oh, you Team Fox is moving on. So Team Fox moves on in the second round of overtime <laughs> to advance to the winner of our next match, which is Team Johnson versus Team Zimmerman. We'll take a deep breath and come back and wrap this one up, or at least wrap up match number one. It's our Island Lanes Championship from here on Grand Island. More beat the champ right after this. Oh, a heartbreaking overtime defeat for Team Moran. Captain Andy Moran, what's going through your mind there as we tie, we go to the second overtime? All I can say is we ran into a buzzsaw right there, <laughs> especially in overtime. You know, nothing you can do about it. <laughs> well done, Andy. Uh, well done. Hey, you guys put up a heck of a fight. Who are we rooting for here for the rest of this thing? We're rooting for the bar. That's where we're going, and that's that's how we're going to do it. Why am I not surprised? Yeah. So it's the second match to determine who bowls against Team Fox for the Island Lanes Championship. That's coming up next on Beat the Champ. Well, we can only hope that match number two will be as exciting as match number one. There are our captains, Mike Johnson and Jeremy Zimmerman. It's match number two of our Island Lanes Championship Baker format, teams of five. I don't know what to expect here. Brandon Degatti, our guest color commentator, what can we possibly expect this in this one? This one could be bad. The good news is that Zimmerman and Baldwin's on the same team. All right, well, we got the seasoned veteran here in uh, Ron Sutton. So Ron Sutton for Team Zimmerman starts us off. It's another Hall of Famer. Come on, Ron! Come on! 
run overcompensated for the drive. Denied, denied. Yeah. Well, but what is it about all these Hall of Famers that hang out at Island Lanes? Yeah, we just bring them in. <laughs> I'd say that we create them, but Ron's been a legend longer than he's even lived in this area. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know where we got him from. We prefer his Florida. life over him. Ron, but, oh, I see. Ron was uh, born in Minnesota, but he lived uh, most, of, most of the time in Florida. That's where Lori met him. Brought him back here to Western New York, so we Thank can God all enjoy that. him, right? I don't know what I do about him. Now. Him and him and Pat Brick kind of made me realize that bowling's not a joke. I mean, I used to bowl tournaments, and if I wasn't bowling good, I was putting my stuff away and going home. And they, well, you can't do that. You're going to see that again. Some there's another Hall of Famer right here, Ken Pelletier. Uh, he's injured right now. I think he had a little spill. He sliced his thumb up pretty good the other day. He wasn't even in a bowl, but he. He just couldn't resist hanging oh, out here, you know? I, Of course. Who could resist hanging out with this crowd here at Island Lakes? I played softball with Kenny. Kenny's Kenny's helped me. He's trying to teach me how to play in the gutter because I'm, I'm not real good at playing dead straight like every other well, lefty Ken, I know. Uh, Ken and I bowled college together, so we go way back. Yeah. Good spare pickup for Ken Pelletier. It's very, very good spare. lefty. Very good lefty. Yeah, he bowls Monday nights. His whole family and his brother bowls here. Okay. Who's next here? Tommy. Tim. Jody. No, Jody next. Barrett's up. Jody, oh, Jody Barrett. Mike Johnson. For Team Johnson. Okay. Captain by Mike Johnson, who we saw just make a great run of uh, some incredible victories here earlier in the month at Island Lanes. Hi, Jody. Oh yeah. Barrett with a nice strike. Another solid female pick. The draft was hinged on where you're going to take your female and which one you're going to get. Down and that's how our teams were determined. A draft among the four captains oh, to determine the Tom. squad. How do we pick the draft order? It went by the qualifying scores. Gotcha. Top, top qualifier was first overall pick. And then there's Tommy. I've known Tommy since he had hair. <laughs> He used to have a lot of hair. <laughs> Tommy, oh, fireball. Whoa. Tommy Calvin is yeah. really fireball. Yeah. Wow, sometimes there's some he, ball speed. <laughs> sometimes he doesn't know where they're going, but he throws fireballs. Wow, that was yeah, that's literally right like there. the fastest release I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. We're going to be back with more Beat the Champ bowling action in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Team captain, crucial stretch of the final two frames. This one's pretty big. They want to stay in the game. They, they're going to need a little bit of a break anyway. Oh, wow. Great shot. Mr. Winning Streak, Jeremy Zimmerman, could not get the 10 pin to go. Unfortunately, no in the lanes here like I do. You get inside, you get into the third arrow like that, and it gets really hard to carry at this place. And I think he, he might have, I have to ask him, but he might have pulled it a little bit and it's whatever little oil there is and held that line. All right, so another crucial single pin spare for Team Zimmerman. Oh. oh, and another crucial miss. Boy, add up the way, add up the distance that those two single pin misses, and you might get a half an inch. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe a half an inch. So now Jeff Dio and Mike Johnson can probably take control of this it's thing. A, it's got a mark now. I mean, they can even dump one, but I don't think. Oh, baby. Oh. Oh, see, yeah, well, you, he's got a little redemption here now. He can try to, now that he's on Johnson's team, I think Mike might want him to make it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little flashback here from a couple of weeks ago. Not, I mean, Johnson's tough as nails, so he'll be able to seal it for him in the 10th, but you don't want to open it. Oh boy. Got it. Everybody else hooked by and he's just slid. 
If you do that two weeks ago, how cool is that about? Yeah, that was, that was real life. Oh, see, there you go. Didn't take long for somebody to trash talk that one up. Yeah, well. All right, so Mike Johnson can finish things off for Team Johnson here. Mike. Well, this time it's the four pin that won't go down. But they have enough. They have. They got enough. Yep. Even so if he misses it, it the they have uh, one more than they need. So Team Johnson is going to get the victory that will advance them to the finals versus Team Fox. Right. They better thank their female because they they really rode her back. She struck both shots. Yeah. So not quite the excitement of a tie match and two rounds of overtime like we had in the first one. You still got Mike. That's all you got, Mike? That's all I got. <laughs> Figure even in a losing effort, you can still have some fun. Give yeah. me the next shot. So Mike Johnson will finish things out here for his squad with a 2-15 score. And that's a good Baker game from a ragtag group of guys that are all over the board You're right. on beat up lane conditions. That's tough to do. Ragtag is about the nicest thing you could have said, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a, a little late cheer there from Mike Mollitz. <laughs> A little too late, hey, but... Thanks, Tommy. Hey, Tommy. Well, I'll tell you what, if you can't tell that these guys don't have a lot of fun around here, yeah, I, don't know what, I don't know what you're missing, I'd but... i say we could have got a little louder cheer out of him, but between the Bills and bowling, <laughs> he doesn't have much of a voice left around this time of year. That's a phenomenal pass. Yeah. And a, oh, and here careful. We go. Careful. Make it matter. Oh, yeah, it's going to matter. You get no handicap. I don't think he can sweet talk her into I was going to say, he was trying there. to sweet talk her into another 10 pins, 10 or 12 pins. I understand home field advantage. His name is on the sign, but I don't think he's going to get any help from there. <laughs> it's a 215 to 204 win for Team Johnson. They advance to our finals. We'll talk to the gang from Team Zimmerman when we return to Island Lanes. Coming up next on Beat the Champ. <laughs> Well, a narrow defeat for Team Zimmerman. Jeremy, how do you handle in this one? Are you are you rethinking some of those team choices maybe now or what? Absolutely not. I got the best team ever. When you, you come in and your first draft pick is my best friend here. <laughs> and then you got, I can't speak enough. She said, why buy, buy a shot? Okay, we're in. <laughs> so we're good. We're good. It, it I didn't I, take much more of that. We should have saved it for a victory <laughs> shot. <laughs> it's all good. You know what? I enjoyed it. It was fun. And I'll be back again. All right, so give me a prediction on our championship matchup here. Fox versus Johnson. Ooh. I got Mike Johnson leaving a five pin. <laughs> five pin? Seriously? What? All right, well, maybe not everybody agrees with you on that one. We'll find out. Championship match is coming up next. Title match of the Island Lanes Championship. The captains, Mike Johnson and Jim Fox, ready to have their team square off for, I don't know, is Brandon Degatti, is there gonna be a trophy in this or is it just like uh, free drinks at the bar for the winning team? Oh, we don't get, no, year long bragging rights. I mean, that's what I would want. Okay. Thank God I didn't have to worry about it because I'm a, Joke it itself here. The oh. Last year, Mike threw the Frankenstein comment out at me, and I, I let him slide. I didn't even make it no, say nothing about it. All right, so there's a lot on the line, is what you're telling. Bragging rights oh, that boy. will last for a year. Wow. And wow. Chris Wilkinson, not with the start that he was hoping for. Oh. oh, just what you don't want to see. <laughs> Don't get four again. Oh. Now imagine that. 
in the middle of the league. Is that if you four count, and it happens a lot on Tuesday nights, that's what you walk into. And the whole, the whole place does oh, that? The whole, well, Artie's the only one who doesn't do it. Artie thinks it's the dumbest thing ever. I couldn't agree with him more because I, I four count here quite often. Actually. <laughs> Not like that. Mine's going through the face. Ken Pelletier for Team Johnson. Oh. oh. See, there was only one lefty. His lanes are still normal. That's right. So again, the winner of this will be the Island Lanes champion and have bragging rights for the next year until we come back here for Beat the Champ. And I am pretty sure that the winning team members will not ever let it live down against anybody else in this place. No, they won't. And don't forget, at the end of our show here, we'll have our Ortner Overhead Door Word of the Week. You can enter to win an Ortner Garage Door Opener. Contest details at WBBZ.TV. Following this show, we pack everything up and head out to Batavia to Mancuso's Lanes for next month's series of Beat the Champ shows where our defending champ, John Daniel Wicks, will come back to try to keep his winning streak alive. This is Jody Barrett. It's a good break, too. Second bowler up for Team Johnson. Five bowlers on each squad go through the first five and then start in frame six and go through the five again. As you saw in our first match, that isn't always enough to decide it sometimes. <laughs> Like you said here, you got to expect the unexpected. Yes. Lisa Bugenhagen, the next bowler up for Team Fox. That, this was a family love pick, too. And I think his father-in-law would have been real unhappy if he didn't pick her. <laughs> Sometimes there is a bigger picture at play here. Well, Team Fox consists of Mike's sister, Kelly's husband. Uh-huh. Jim's daughter's boyfriend and Jim's sister-in-law. Gotcha. So I, I think I follow and Frank. all that. It's, it's three families and a Frank. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Either way, what it meant was she needed to be on this team. Oh yeah. Not. I mean, bowling ability played a pretty key factor in it too, because we kept her on our travel team for all those years. Because she averaged, she averaged two. 210, 212 all the time. Very rarely bowled under her average. Stays there's clean. The, there's the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. Janelle Saban breathing a sigh of relief that Mike Malwitz has been eliminated <laughs> so she can focus on her job for the rest of this match of keeping track of the score. Next up is Frank Miseraca. Almost got that pin action to take the nine out. I think after the last month of shows, I think Johnson really took everybody's pin action because it is a little yeah, run. Yeah, you're right about that. You know, he you're had right a about guy that. Guy in the back. That's why. Oh no, I was up here. I wasn't helping him. Brandon Degatti's yeah, done a great Brady. job providing us the Island Lanes insight here. Hopefully, Brandon, we get you back on the regular show here, even though we're not coming back here for a while. Hopefully, you keep pounding away at it. We get you back we're, on the we're show. We're not working nearly as many Saturdays as we were before, so I think I've, I'll come out and bowl more often. Good. I say that I don't miss it, but I'm starting to really get the itch to bowl and work so a second. bowling league at all? I bowl on Thursday mornings at Kenmore. It's in a retired league. I'm on second shift most of the time, so I don't really get to bowl all that often. Gary Scott with a strike for Team Johnson. But I, sometimes I think those old guys, they they don't like it because he doesn't belong in this league. Well, right. Oh, you're, right. you're probably the youngest guy in the in the in the league, well, aren't there's you? There's two people younger than me, but yeah. and they think it's incredible. Kenmore is one of those lefty houses that are just really easy to strike at, and they like it until I start winning their jackpots. But they're all a bunch of good guys. Jeff Dio, next up. Oh, that pin has just been on him all day. Yeah, I know. That the poor 10, Jeff and the poor 10 pin, he can't shake that 10 pin all day, all month. <laughs> oh, 
No, but he made the last one. Usually, if you start making them all, you stop leaving them. Right. It's when you're missing them that they just they pop up everywhere. Let's see if Jeff can grab it. And he can. Good job. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Well, we're making our way through the first group of five for each team. And here is Mike Johnson. And we're coming to the end of a long run here on these lanes, and they're starting to show Yeah, they're really starting to, uh, to break down. That was a really good shot, though. Some people, I prefer the way wood breaks down. Synthetic and I don't get along all that great, <laughs> but you can really tell the difference. So Mike Johnson gets the spare, and we head back to the top of the order for Ken Pelletier to determine our Island Lanes Championship. Remember, as Brandon filled this in, the high qualifiers earned the captain spots, and then they had a draft and each captain was able to draft his own team. Oh. If, if you're feeling adventurous and you're friends with Mike Mullis on Facebook, I believe they live streamed the draft. So if you want to see oh whatever, boy. whatever chaos ensued during that, <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to. So it anyone, might be worth watching is what you're you saying. You might not want to let anyone under the age of 18 watch it because, you know, I'm sure that they, dropped a couple of obscenities <laughs> after a night of, I think it was after a Friday night of bowling. Oh, that's got trouble written all over it. Yeah. After, just the word after yeah, bowling yeah. Is, is where it's trouble probably comes. probably about 10.30, 11 o'clock that the draft took place. All right, Ken Pelletier, minus any socks, yeah. gets the pair. <laughs> Definitely doesn't. Who needs any socks? I think it's a, he, he won't tell me why he doesn't wear socks. He just says, I never have. I think he's got some kind of secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a somewhat It's close those web game. toes that he has. <laughs> Chris um, Wilkinson. He's a Patriots fan. We got no love for him. go from throwing a four count, picking basically three off the left to doing that. He got heckled after that four yeah. count. He responded. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he wanted to hear that again. No, no. no. Lisa Bugenhagen for Team Fox as we head down the stretch into the seventh frame. Nice shot. Yeah. Great shot. Great shot. Here we go with that again. And her poor husband just got to sit right behind us and take it. <laughs> take all the abuse we give to him. Jody Barrett for Team Johnson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Another good yeah. shot. Yeah. She threw four shots, struck three, and spared one. Can't ask for better production yeah. than that. The ladies have carried their oh. teams. Yeah, well, isn't that how it is in all aspects of life? Absolutely, <laughs> you know, without question. Feel free to just say yes and agree. <laughs> I Here, like it. I know you do. Here's Gary Scott. Gary, Gary. Oh, yeah. oh, we're heating up now. Oh, yeah. See, he can celebrate all he wants. His wife is better than him too. <laughs> Frank Misaraka next up for Team Fox. I think Frank struck every shot he's thrown so far, too. He struck both the first game. Yeah, we've had great bowling. The, the bowling by everybody's been outstanding. This was a mix of a spare shooter game. Now they're starting to strike. Yeah. Ah. What a shot. That, this is just like the last game. Started off kind of putting everyone to sleep, and now they're starting to wake up again. Mike Crycom for Team Fox next oh. up. Uh-oh. Yeah. Easy now. That's, they need all those balls up there. Don't get anybody hurt. Oh, 
headed towards the eighth frame. Actually, we're going to the ninth frame. Team Foss is up 16 pins. But everybody's got strikes, so anything can happen. Especially with Crankham throwing it. <laughs> well, he, that was better than the last one, but that's not This is no that. easy spare. No, not for him either. Not for his mother, father, or Jeff. Yeah, they'd make it, but it's the oh, he's not using the dice ball. Usually you pull the dice ball. We out. liked it. We know we I, talked about the dice ball early on, on the first week show. If I don't pull my spare ball out of the bag, the dice ball's my go-to. We got almost the same size thumb. Oh, oh. boy, that pin just whipped its way right around and never knocked the 10 down. And the door is there trying to, Team Johnson is gonna to try to kick this door down. Well, in Jeff Dio and Mike Johnson, you got a couple of guys who know how to do it. Well, I don't know, Dio's having a hard time carrying the 10 pin, but we'll see what he <laughs> That's on lane 10 though, lane nine, you know. I noticed you raised your voice a little bit there I to know, make sure yeah, you I heard need, you. need to make sure you heard that. Yeah, he did miss that one on nine, not 10. Ooh, this could be tough. Yeah. How about that yeah, for a response? He went for the light hey, hit. Yeah, that book. No 10 pin on a swisher. That's hey, any, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> well, they can almost, with, with Johnson up, it's almost a no brainer what's going to happen now. Watch for the hop. Uh-oh. That count was important. So Mike Johnson, the anchor and the captain of his team, trying to clinch a victory. So right now the best he can do is 206. And Team Foss can strike out for 208. Now Jim can make up for his, well he tied but he couldn't seal the deal on the last one. All right, so this one's gonna come right down to Jim Fox, the final bowler with a chance to win it. He's gonna want them all here too, because you don't want an eight count, make it real easy to double it. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Ouch. You, you, that pretty much took away the yeah, possibility of a tie. You, well, anything can happen, but yeah. if Jim doubles, it's... Almost call in, channel your any Tom or Tommy Kalman and just fire a rocket down the middle of the lane. <laughs> All right, so Jim Fox needs a double for his team to win. A double and six. A double and six to win. Come on. Oh, yeah. Clutch performance. Now, he needed to double their first match, too. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, if you do want to come out and eat dinner on a Wednesday night, this is your guy. He makes the Wednesday night dinner? Oh, yeah. He had All right. A couple weeks ago, he made meatballs. Oh, they are to die for. All right, Jim Fox needs another strike. And that is gonna give the victory to Team Johnson. Should have brought in the sub again. So what does Mike Johnson do to these all, people to make them panic so much on the last I, shot? I don't know, Mike Johnson's got some kind of, it must be his height, he's kind of tall, I guess. <laughs> or the goatee, I don't know what it is, but he strikes fear into people's hearts. I, <laughs> A 203 to 197 victory for Team Johnson to claim the Island Lanes Championship and bragging rights probably forever, no matter what happens a year from now. But we will break it down and wrap it all up when we return to Island Lanes. You're watching Beat the Champ.
bragging rights belong to Mike Johnson and his team here at Island Lanes. Jim Fox, a tough one down the stretch there for you. Yeah, it was tough. Uh, they had a great team going, and, and uh, we did our best. Right. So, well, Brandon okay. Degatti says, uh, based on uh, his experiences, uh, the entire crew wants to try your meatballs at some point here. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on down. I got you. <laughs> All right. Hey, good. Mike, congratulations. Hey, Mike. You have a little bit of magic going on here today. A little bit. Yep, you've got somehow you psych these people out and strike the fear in them to um, make these uh, shots in the 10th frame that go in your favor. What is it this, with this place? <laughs> uh, it's a great question. I don't know. I think it, it kind of felt like we were, we were all just having a good time and rooting for each other, and it was fun. They just, and they fell down for my, me and my team, and uh it was good stuff. Well, I think you should call for some pot games or a poker game or something there today, but <laughs> congratulations. We can do this all night. That's all right with me. I, I think he's just happy to have bragging rights here at Island That's Lanes right. for the next year. Mike Mullitz, it'll be your job to keep these guys a little under control. I'll try. Monday night's going to be fun. I can't wait for Monday night because, you know, a lot of bowlers on Monday night. Uh, so here's all your team's money. Make sure you split it up divvy evenly. Up. Yeah, divvy it up. Don't be stingy. But yeah, Monday night's going to be rocking. Uh, you know, Jeff Dio, Jim Fox Bowls on Monday, all of us, it's going to be great. All right, you might want to be here then on Monday to just, just sample what goes on as these guys celebrate their Island Lanes Championship. Sue and I, along with Janelle, are here to wrap up our month-long stay in Grand Island when we return right after this. Well, I think it's easy to say it's certainly worth the dollar toll to come to Grand Island and hang out with the great bunch here at Island Lanes. From our first week of competition to a pretty cool event that we had here today, I know this I, was a lot of fun. It was, and I signed up for leagues so that next year I can be on this team. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> See, that'll be even more fun when you get a chance to be a part of it next year. But bragging rights to Team Johnson for a year, and I'm sure they will not let it down. All right, you got to tell us, what did Mike Mullins try to bribe you with there? to try to change the score on his he team's didn't match. bribe me he just wasn't going away until I changed that <laughs> score but that was not happening I will not change that's scores. right you've got to be <laughs> pulled firm to the yes. rules of bowling yes. right all right well we had a great time here at Grand Island we can't wait to have a great time next month when we move everything off to Batavia and hang out for the next four weeks at Mancuso's lanes we will see you then for beat the champ